I'm Jan Love. I'm a retired senior master sergeant from the Colorado Air National Guard. I came um, out to Lowry to go to the Intel School back in July of 1976. My name is Bonnie Rott, retired Chief Master Sergeant Joyce Seda. And I joined a little later than you guys did, and I was a traditional guardsman. So I didn't, you guys had already paved the way by the time I came in. I was able to uh, go into aircraft maintenance. I never think of myself as a female crew chief. I'm just a crew chief. I do the same work that all the men in my shop do, and I'm perfectly capable, and I never view myself as different from my coworkers. And it never used to be like that. And certainly we still have our challenges as women, especially in maintenance. There's not that many of us. We're still trying to get, um, you know, more of uh, an equal size workforce, but it's, we still come so far and we have a long way to go. Um, I spent 37 years in the Colorado Air Guard. I uh, joined in 1970. I was the first female in the 140th Combat Support Squadron. But I can't imagine, I can't imagine being the first woman to say, no, I deserve to be here, I should be here and you're going to let me be here. So I think that that's really important to look back and see that, how, how they did that, why they did that, and the response that they got. And there was a civilian that was bound to determine I was going to be in personnel, and I wasn't going to be in personnel. They made me exec to the commander. Uh, I came in from the Women's Army Corps, served in Vietnam, and then uh, came and uh, joined the Colorado uh, Guard. Representation matters. So just learning about the other woman that's done it before you gives you the confidence that you can do it as well. I know even joining my shop, there was another female electrician and I was not catching on as quickly. But the fact that she was like so savvy, I was like, well, if she can do it, I know I can, right? And so, and same thing going up the ranks, I want to see more female representation. Um, reflected in there so you know other younger women coming behind us know that they can achieve that as well so I think that's why it's always important to reflect back on that history so you can see that representation. It was challenging uh, I was a traditional guardsman I worked construction on the civilian side uh, sometimes I'd come right off the job working all night and uh, have to change into uniform uh, to work um, so I used to get upset when uh, the, and it was mainly technicians then. We didn't have very many AGRs that would complain. And uh, I didn't have any uh, <clears throat> sorry for them. When I was a senior in high school, my brother was in the Army. And I got a draft notice in the mail because he had used my social security number instead of his because he knew me, mine was close to his. So my father had to take me physically to downtown Chicago with my birth certificate to prove that I was a female. For me, I'm an egress mechanic and I started my career in Toledo, Ohio and I was the first woman in my shop. So I came into the shop um, and the guys were just kind of like, whoa, we're, we've never worked with a woman before. And um, I came in there ready to learn and eager to set the foundation for a woman in the egress shop. And I think it's important that we recognize all those women before us in any aspect of the military, that they set a great foundation for us to lead on and we continue setting that foundation for women in the future. I just decided, you know, if my grandpa and my dad and my older brother could all be in the military, then I could too. I, we see them like, okay, they did that like that. I can do this. And it's just, it's giving a lot of women courage that if they can do it, then I can do it too. My position was not a de deployable position and I got pregnant. And I was the first female on Buckley to be issued a maternity uniform. That's my name to fame. And the Koang went from being a very male-oriented place to work. The females have stepped up and, and have shown that they are worthy of both the rank and their positions. Yeah, when I first arrived here and I got out of tech school, um, I also I had a female role model who was my supervisor and trained me how to be a crew chief. And 
I mean, she was just so inspiring to me in multiple different ways, but um, really she, I mean, it's not a hesitation to say that she is probably the, the one of the best mechanics in my shop. Um, and so whenever I experienced something negative, I felt like I could relate to her, but also I, like you said, I felt like I could tough through everything just because like she was so respected and so talented and so good at what she did that I it made me feel invincible in a lot of ways so um, it's just it's so important to have visibility of other women in the military like that so that we can keep pushing forward. Um, I had a great time um, and we saw more females in the military but you still got to work alongside and do the same things. I never wanted to take an easy way out. I can pull my weight and I think that we all made a difference because we showed that we were equal to all of the tasks. And I had a first sergeant, Sergeant Reyes, and she um, deployed with me to Guam and she was probably one of the most like, one of my biggest role models I think I've ever had because even when she would get like knocked down she did not, her attitude did not change at all. And she always had that positive, like, I got this, I'm not gonna let anyone kick me down attitude. I'm Paul Turner, Senior Master Sergeant, retired. I retired in 2000. I spent half of my career in the medical field with the 140th TAC Hospital. So I worked with mostly women for half of my career. And I worked with the first, I think the first woman colonel in the Colorado International Guard, Judy Cummings. She was sent downtown because back in those days, the only way a woman could get uh, a full colonel or an 06 was to go down to headquarters. So they finally sent her down uh, physically, I mean physically, they sent her downtown to become the first female colonel. Now she was a nurse. And so uh, that, was, that was probably one of the first things I ever noticed. One of the finest and hardest working women I've ever seen. She trained nurses at, at the university and some other places. So she was quite qualified. And I was very surprised to see that they finally recognized a woman in the officer ranks and brought, brought her all the way to full colonel. Um, my sister was in the Navy, and I also had a cousin that was a Naval officer, and actually it helped her get her citizenship. So, um, and I know that was like very emotional and important to her, just because um, she's an immigrant from Jamaica. So, yeah, I have definitely had a lot of female. I think those are the only family members <laughs> that joined the military were females in my family. So it made me. Um, feel like I could do it. My older cousin actually is also a female and she was in the Air National Guard and she led me down the path of joining the Air National Guard and it opened so many doors for me. Um, so no, I didn't know that I was going to join the military until I was probably a senior and saw my cousin walk through the military and get her school paid for and start her life as a nurse um, outside of the military. She only served for six years but she definitely laid the foundation for me. So I worked with a lot of women and they were very competent <clears throat> and uh, they trained me to to do a lot of things in the medical field that were very interesting especially when we deployed to Turkey one year where we spent almost six weeks in Turkey up on the Black Sea. If it wasn't for those women and their competency I wouldn't be here today because we had a lot of problems up there uh, during that period of time working with the uh, Turks. I have a lot of respect for women. I've had to work with them, had to have worked with them uh, voluntarily in the medical field. And of course, uh, we moved over to aircraft maintenance. And of course, a lot of women there. We had crew chiefs in the 200th that were women. And so a lot of women during my career finally were allowed to be uh, in maintenance too, not just in the, in the medical field, which is where you see women mostly started out. So I was surprised to see that. They all did a great job. Hello, my name is Dewey Hicks, uh, retired as a master sergeant from the Guard, and I came in in 76, and I came from the Marine Corps, believe it or not, and I, when I got to the Guard, I thought I'd fallen off the turnip truck. What a change uh, from being everybody's a grunt to having to actually um, do technical stuff, no technical stuff, get a clearance and uh, met the ladies. And uh, when I was in the Marines, the ladies were not as prevalent in, in the Corps as uh, they are today in the, uh, in the Guard or the Air Force. They even flying jets and such now. And um, the ladies here, I think, 
right now a representative of my exposure, first exposure. The, the chief over here was always encouraging advancement and for your ranks. Um, so I always knew I was going to be in the military. I definitely had no intentions of doing maintenance. I actually wanted to do intel, um, but that just ended up not being an option for me when I enlisted. And I, <laughs> I always knew I wanted to be in the military, so I was proud to be in the military no matter what my job was going to be. But I thought I made a huge mistake when I went to tech school. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I never thought I was capable of um, picking up a tool. I never thought I would do it a day in my life, and I didn't think I could do this job. And then I showed up here, and um, I had like a female supervisor that was incredibly inspiring to me, and I was really patient in teaching me how to do my job, and um, kind of taking me under her wing. And I. I mean, it was such a humbling experience because I, I think we often assume we know everything about ourselves, um, but we don't. You know, you try new things and you learn that it's not that bad. And I actually feel like I feel like I have a very solid place in this unit, and I feel like I'm an incredibly competent and confident mechanic now. I think I would say that the guard for me and meeting the uh, the females in the guard was almost like being in a family. And, you know, we had our differences and such, but I always did what they said, so. <laughs>